presenting to you Governor McKee, Max Winstein, and Jonathan Savage, who will be uh, the state's new legal team regarding the Washington Bridge. Um, what, that's what we intend to focus on today. That will be the focus of this briefing, is to let you know uh, the purpose of this and where we'll be going from here. So we will as we talk to you today, the focus is not on the forensic report. That is still forthcoming. We will still get that information when it does come. But it is to focus on these gentlemen who will be presenting your questions after we're done. So I'd like to introduce to you Governor McKee. Thanks, Joe. And thanks once again for your leadership and making sure that we're uh, coordinating all the, uh, the different parties uh, that are so important to this effort uh, regarding the Washington Bridge. Uh, as we continue to move forward, uh, a brand new Washington on the brand new Washington Bridge, building one, uh, that a bridge that will outlast our lifetimes. We've also engaged an impressive, experienced legal team to pursue accountability on behalf of Rhode Island's taxpayers. We're here today to introduce that team. Top Investigative Attorney Mac Wistow, Max Wistow, and Veteran Attorney Jonathan Savage, uh, who are here with us today. Thank you very much for uh, signing that letter and moving us forward in terms of, a, of an engagement. As we stand here today, we want to make it very clear any responsible parties will be held fully accountable. This marks the next step towards achieving that goal. The combined expertise on this legal team will put the state in a strong position to build the best possible case for Rhode Island taxpayers and deliver the accountability that they deserve. The name Max Wistow may mean something to you in the media because he has made headlines before. He was the lead attorney in recovering $70 million for the state of Rhode Island and 38 studios. He also successfully recovered $50 million to date for retirees impacted by the St. Joseph's pension fund failure. His firm, Wistow, Sheehan, and Lovely, helped secure $176 million in settlement for victims of the station nightclub fire. Now he's back working for the people of Rhode Island. Max specializes in complex, multi-party litigation, and he has a strong record of successfully managing high-profile cases and recovering millions of dollars on behalf of Rhode Islanders. Joining Max on our legal team is John Savage of Savage Law Partners. His firm brings substantial legal expertise in the construction sector, which will be essential in this process. That specialized expertise will allow this team to hit the ground running. We've engaged this team to, one, follow the facts, two, develop a legal strategy, and three, pursue potential legal action with the goal of financial recovery. Now I know, now I know there's been discussion about the Attorney General's involvement in this effort. Our legal team begins their work as they begin their work, I've asked this, them to reach out to the Attorney General's office to follow up on his offer of support. We will make sure we engage every possible asset in the state of Rhode Island to re maximize the recovery for the Rhode Island taxpayers. One of our legal team's first priorities will be to review the forensic analysis once it's complete. It's true that the forensic analysis has taken more time than originally estimated, but that means that the team is digging deep. It's always smart to make sure that 
We're not, uh, we're always quick, but never in a hurry. Hurry causes problems. Quick is exactly the, what we want to have happen here on all fronts, whether it's removing the bridge, building a new bridge, or, or, or going uh, in the direction that we are announcing today and engaging a legal, legal team to maximize the opportunities that we have uh, to help the other uh, Rhode Island taxpayers. The resulting comprehensive analysis should give us the answers we are seeking and help us hold the right players accountable. Uh, just like I've said, we're going to build a brand new bridge and we're going to do it right. And we're going to keep people safe. We also are going to build a legal case and we are going to do it right. With that, I'd like to invite both Max and John to the podium to offer some brief remarks. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> um, when we first started discussing the case with the governor, he made it absolutely clear that there were no restrictions, whatever, on who could be a defendant in the case. And I was more than delighted to hear that because one of the conditions that I would have to get involved in the case is that there would be no restrictions. If somebody was at fault and it had anything to do with the problems we have, it's open season. And I've been assured by the governor that we will be totally supported in, in that regard. So the chips are gonna fall where they may. At this point, we've just come on. We have very little information. Uh, we're awaiting, as everybody else is, the results of the reports by the experts. We're gonna be conferring with them. But we do wanna get this going as soon as we can. But of course, we need to do it deliber deliberately and, and carefully. Thank you. John? I'll just say briefly that, uh, Governor, thank you for having uh, the trust and confidence in our team uh, to uh, pursue this uh, critically important matter on behalf of the uh, taxpayers in the state of Rhode Island. Um, and um, as uh, the governor has said, and as Max has said, uh, our mandate is to leave no stone unturned and follow the facts and pursue the facts aggressively and quickly to a uh, result uh, that we certainly are hopeful uh, will be a positive a result for the taxpayers in the state of Ohio. So thank you, Governor, for that. So I know it's brief today, but thank you for taking the time to come. We think it's a very important matter. Um, we're going to take questions, which Andrea will lead. So three. Max, John, or the governor, please uh, say who you want to direct your questions to. All right, we're going to start with Chris. Uh, yeah, I guess a question for governor and attorneys <clears throat> is just we're not here on this. How much are they charging? What are the okay, yeah? What's their structured retainer? Is there an hourly rate or and just how can the state recoup these funds? And then is there yeah, some sort of award structure that's going to be put into this contract? So it's a it's a it's a agreement based on a contingency uh, for um, sixteen percent, sixteen point two thirds, sixteen two thirds, which is very similar to the it's actually identical to the arrangement that we had with thirty eight studios. All right, go to Brian next. Uh, Governor, in the past couple of months, I know you're still waiting for the forensic audit. Have you learned anything else about? whether DOT or anybody else knew there was a problem with the bridge before December, whether that was months ahead of time, years ahead of time, whether it was in uh, inspection reports, have you learned anything that leads you to believe that this, people were aware that there was a problem before December? I haven't, but that's the reason that uh, we have a, a legal team on to determine where accountability is, and we expect that that's you know, we'll have that information and be able to answer that question uh, in due time. And can I just follow up? I mean, are, is the direction to look at DOT, at the contractors, at everything? Is there anything specific direction that you've given them as to where to look? I think that Max filled it out is that uh, it's open to uh, full disclosures and, and making sure that we're uh, looking at every option uh, to maximize the opportunity for the taxpayers to work out. We'll go here to Pat. 
Uh, Governor, the last time the state faced this type of legal crisis would have been 38 studios. And at that time, a great deal of information ended up being hidden, in some cases permanently, behind the wall of a grand jury. Will the state work aggressively to prevent that type of mistake being again so that we can have legally full disclosure? Well, I'll follow the legal team's advice in terms of any disclosure, uh, but certainly the intention is to provide all information uh, to the taxpayers of the state of Rhode Island. Steph? Uh, Governor, do you expect any additional accountability outside of the lawsuit, such as for Director Alvey or anyone at the DOT who was responsible for maintaining this bridge over the past how many years? So on the legal process, the, you know, we're open to uh, every, every possibility uh, and we'll follow the lead as the facts um, you know, lead us. So we'll, we'll see where that is, but at this point in time, I really can't make a comment uh, you know, specific to your question. Uh, my question was outside of the legal lawsuit, is there any other accountability you expect internally for state employees? Yeah, I've already answered that multiple times, that if, uh, you know, once uh, if information if people had information that they didn't provide that could have been helpful in this case, it'll cost them the accountability. All right, we're going to go to Eli. Uh, Governor, did you talk to Governor Chafee about this legal pain? They look awfully familiar. Uh, well, I had that conversation not recently to Governor Chafee about the issues that um, that he was involved in, but uh, and so we'll reach out. To, we're going to reach out to every possible person that can provide his advice to do the three things that we're talking about right now, right? Just keeping people safe, and building a brand new bridge that will outlast our lifetimes, and making sure that we keep people accountable in all respects. And then just real quickly, the, the AG said that he reached out offering his help. Um, have you talked to him, and, and why didn't you respond to him since March 15th? Well, first of all, I did get a text from uh, the Attorney General on March 15th. I did respond to that text and thank him for the text. Uh, and uh, and then he, he gave me a little thumbs up. Uh, but he also indicated that he had confidence that we had things under well, well under control. And as I mentioned in my, uh, you know, my, my comments, is that uh, we've uh, certainly relayed that text to our legal team in our office. And we've, now we've, we've also relayed that text uh, to this team as well. And uh, I would expect that they would be reaching out to the Attorney General if they feel as though that he can be helpful mm -hmm. in the case and the objectives that we've set. Patrick? It was that a thumbs up response or a thumbs up emoji? <laughs> it was the emoji. So, but you know, I'm sure that I'll, I'm sure I'll be happy to share that at some point. So, I'll be happy to do that. And, and on on the lawsuit, if the focus is to recover money, doesn't that preclude looking at DOT or internal people responsible? After all, if you sue the state, you're not going to re uh, recover any money. Doesn't that mean you are by default looking at the private parties and not the state? Well, our contingency, our agreement with our legal team is to recover and to and to compensate on, on cash recovery. That's true, but we've also said that we are not leaving any stone unturned relative to accountability. And I would think that uh, you know they'll pay a pot in that, we'll pay a role in that as well. But let's wait on some of the reports but that that's we're. That's what happened with Thirty Eight Studios. Is the focus was all on getting money from the private parties and not on digging into why the mistake happened in the first place. Yes, yeah, so I've already said that as we get the reports in, remember, we've hired our own uh, engineers. Uh, we've hired a, our own team in terms of legal representation. Uh, they're accountable to our office, to me. And we've already stated that we're going to provide the engineering information once, uh, we, once our engineers have a final uh, draft that they approve uh, and do the work that they need to do. Like I said, we don't, you know, quick but not in a hurry. Right, quick but not in a hurry. Over here to Alex. Um, with the uh, why hire an outside legal team in the first place? I mean, do you not have confidence in the attorney general's team? We were, we're following precedent that's already been established in our, our office, and I have taken a position that I'm taking a leading role in this effort in terms of the Washington Bridge and everything that has to do with the Washington Bridge, including the legal. So I feel comfortable that we've hired a team, not only on the engineering, uh, but also now on the legal, and we'll, we'll, we'll use every asset that the state has to maximize the, uh, you know, the, the outcomes that we're looking for. Including the attorney general. And with this investigation, you guys mentioned there's no holding back. Everyone could be, anyone could be held responsible. 
with all due respect, does that also include you? Of course. I think that anybody, I, 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 of course, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's not, that, you know, the chip's not going to fall there. But, uh, but I think it's a real, total review of, of what we've done and, and where accountability should be. Uh, and, um, and I'm confident that uh, we're, in, we're, we're on a pace right now that is going to achieve the goals that we've set, which is building a brand new bridge that outlasts all of our lifetimes. Uh, and to look at why, we, why we're in that position uh, and I've said before, I think that, that we should have been in this position years ago. We'll go back to Steve. Two questions, if I may, Governor. Yes. You said quick but not in a hurry. Is this open-ended as far as the legal investigation goes? Yeah, I, I think it is. No the, time frame? For, I, I don't think there's a time frame because I don't want us to rush something uh, and then miss something, right? So uh, we'll have patience on this thing. And also, look, we've separated now, as you can see, we separated the legal process from the actual work that needs to be done. Uh, we have uh, owners reps in place now to start putting RFPs out for the demolition, RFPs out for the construction of a new bridge. Uh, we're not gonna let the legal process interfere with the process of actually getting the work done. That's what is really what the people that live in the state of Rhode Island are looking for is a you know, safe, efficient, and, a, and a, an accelerated strategy to get those things done. So, yeah, so yes, they're going to be working in their own area. We'll certainly be care, comparing notes on what's going on and the things that they need, but, um, but we're not slowing down the process. And secondarily, if I may, um, it comes to light, apparently there was a technical evaluation of the Washington Bridge that was issued in 2015 that suggested heavy trucks ought to be barred from the bridge at that time. Does that surprise you, and is that part of uh, your evaluation? That'll be part of the evaluation. I'm, I'm not completely aware to be able to make comments on, on, the, on the scope of that report, so that's what, that's what we got our engineers Some for. And they, they'll, they'll certainly come back and, 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 and deliver the, um, the full information. That's why we're, that's why I believe that uh, the engineer has not uh, is not ready to give us the report. They're, they're looking back, and if they're looking back on that report, I'm sure it'll be in there in their notes, and I'm sure that our um, our legal team is going to be interested in all those details. What is the rough timeline, Governor? When do you expect the lawsuit to be filed? Uh, that would be a question for me. I, I, I'm not going to get into the legal answers. You guys want to? Do you have a sense of uh, we're talking months, or are we talking a year? The only way I can respond we'll to that is we plan. John and I plan to contact the experts who have been retained so far and speak to them and get a better sense of what's going on in terms of their time, because obviously we're dependent on that. So for me to, and by the way, you, uh, when you say when is the lawsuit going to be brought, we're presupposing, and I hope that you would, I we're presupposing there is a basis for a lawsuit. Uh, we wouldn't get involved in this if we didn't think there's a high likelihood that. But I don't want to prejudge it at this point, and I certainly, certainly don't want to put time limits on it, because I really have not spoken, and not as John, to the people who have been working this up. As I understand it, there are boxes and boxes and boxes of materials that they've got to go through. I'm not sure where they are. I'm sure people are just we're going to find out. That's one of the, we're going to try to get a hold of them today, to try to meet with them next, next week. Okay, good. Uh, first for you. We're going to put a gap order because the director of the BDR building, for some reason, I want to speak to Rinaldo Monte, Tara Granahan, and some of the media. It's a joke that he go every week there, answer the same stupid question. And they lied to the governor. The governor was keeping the dark by Peter Abili. That's the first question. Do you then have one for the governor? All right, well, let me answer it this way. I'm not sure I'm confident to do it. But I, th I think you have to start off with the presumption, just the presumption that nobody's guilty of anything until there's some evidence of that now. Now, on the surface, it looks like this has been going on for a long time, and it looks like maybe DOT has some responsibility, but that's on the surface. We really don't know the details. So I, I don't know Mr. Alvini personally, I've never been in his presence. If it turns out that he's done something wrong, we're gonna report that. And by the way, that's relevant to the uh, question, that I don't wanna get in, into the weeds on this, but if we're going to prepare a lawsuit, we have to understand, are we going to end up with a successful defense 
saying, wait a minute, everything we, these third parties did, was reported properly to DOT, and it's DOT's fault. If that's the case, if that's the case, and I'm not suggesting in any way it is, maybe there wouldn't be a lawsuit. It would just be some administrative recourse against the people within the government who were at fault. But I'm speaking completely hypothetically, totally speculatively, and I know you want answers. I wish I could give you the answers. We just don't have the data. Okay, Governor, how long have you been uh, governor of the state of Hawaii? Two, three, four years? Uh, about three years. A little over three years. How many times you meet with Peter Abiri? Or how often you meet with Peter Abiri? Because also Peter Abiri keep you in the dark about the information on the bridge. I mean, I don't know the other media. They're the ones answering the question. But well, we got pictures and video of the deterioration of that bridge for years. And Peter Abiri knew about it because he meet with the engineer, he meet with the consultants. I mean, somebody's here is lying to the entire state, to the whole community. So uh, it's not just DOT that I meet with regularly, and our staff meets with regularly, it's every department in the state. So we have regular interactions on things that are you know, going on. Uh, obviously, this is raised to a level uh, that has put me in front of a microphone more than once. <laughs> Uh, taking a leading role relative to the Washington Bridge. And right now, again, uh, as Max says, uh, we'll, we'll respond to the facts, uh, but we're not going to respond to speculation. All right, last question to Brian. Governor, in your mind, should any of the contractors who worked on the current bridge be disqualified from working on the new bridge? I, I think that's a good question. Clearly, that's the reason that we went out to a uh, a, a competitive, we're going out to a competitive bid process on the demolition and not taking the first suggestion that somehow the people who were doing the work on the bridge would do the demolishing. So we'll go through an open bid process and we'll evaluate the bids for that work based on the, uh, on, on the value of their, of their response to the uh, pro, you know, for proposal. Great. Governor, Thank what you. kind of insight should the public expect to have into the legal strategy? Because sometimes when it goes down this avenue, it's sort of is shrouded in secrecy for legal reasons, and we don't know about what's going on until a lawsuit drops. Well, on the legal side, we're gonna certainly take uh, the lead from our legal team, right? So we, and when, you, when you're getting to a situation where you're you know, potentially into some form of litigation, um, it's been my experience, uh, not, be, not to be out there shooting from the hip. And uh, people who do shoot from the hip, could potentially cause problems. So Great. is there a gag order to the previous question? Does that mean state government can't talk about this? No, I, I'll, I'm going to be in front of this mic multiple times, and you're going to ask questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my ability. DOT? The same thing. I think that the, you know we clearly have that, you know access there. I, I want them to make sure that they're paying attention to the seven-day-a-week strategy right now of demolishing the bridge and building a new one that outlasts our lifetimes. Why Peter Abir is not here today? This is a legal issue, and we're going to continue to kind of separate uh, the workload from the legal issue, and then where they are, get, get, need to be connected, we'll, I'll make that decision. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.